Hey, what's up, everybody? Rob Cohey, Technical Evangelist for Autodesk Manufacturing, and welcome to part four, is it? I've lost count. Uh, of the getting the most out of your 30-day trial with Autodesk Inventor Series. So, so far I've been using all the tutorial examples and I've, I've been heavily um, suggesting that you walk through the tutorials that are in there. I've get, kind of given you my, my thoughts, uh, some, some advice on, you know, best best advice toward part modeling, assembly modeling, and you know, we could, we could spend a week together and I, I, I couldn't possibly um, pass along every bit of, uh, of knowledge or, or some experience that I've, I've had using Inventor over the last 10 years, but uh, hopefully you've taken advantage of uh, some of the tips and tricks that I could offer up uh, anyway for what they're worth. Now the last one we're going to spend a little bit of time on is documenting both uh, parts and assemblies in 2D. And I mentioned right at the outset that there's, there's a couple ways to do that. You can either utilize DWG um, as your standard 2D documentation tool. There's a, a boatload of advantages to doing that. Uh, first and foremost is if, you, if uh, the rest of your company uses DWG, um, they utilize AutoCAD, AutoCAD LT to view engineering documentation. You're able to create native DWG files outside of Inventor. Uh, the other way is, is through IDWs, um, but we're going to focus in on uh, DWG. Same capabilities with IDW and DWG, um, but significant advantages to using DWG over IDW. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to document this part that you see on the screen here in 2D. Right? It's great to be able to create uh, 3D components, but what about documenting um, them in, uh, in a drawing file? Well, let's just go ahead and create a new metric. Uh, and uh, iso.dwg. So we'll just call it the iso.dwg template file. Now each of these templates are completely customizable. You can create your own title blocks, uh, your own borders, and again you put those into these template files just the same way you did with AutoCAD so that all your company standards uh, come across. Now creating drawings inside of Inventor is insanely easy. Basically what I do is I tell it, all right, what scale, what view um, do you want uh, this particular drawing to be shown in? So I'll just say, um, I'm going to place a, uh, um, a front view, grab a top view, and probably an isometric. Now you'll note that I didn't have to call up any other commands in order to create the top and isometric views here. So let's just go ahead and edit that view. Editing a view is, is, is <laughs> wicked easy. You just double click on the view and you say, you know, I want that display as being shaded. So here, I'm um, getting a lot of hidden lines in here. You'll notice that it's doing all the hidden line calculation, and maybe that's not something that you want. So what you can do is you can say, don't show the style from the base. Just shows as uh, uh, just not being hidden line, but hidden line removed. So I'm going to remove those hidden lines to get a nice clean top view so I can get, uh, get it documented as desired, right? So there's a couple ways to get some dimensional values in here. Um, and some people have their preferences over others, but I'll, I'll show you a couple ways to get dimensional values in here. The first one is, is, is to retrieve model dimensions. Now by retrieving the model dimensions, it's going to reach into the model and grab those parameters that you put in the part. Um, but I'm hearing from a lot of users that retrieving model dimensions, those aren't necessarily the dimensions that you would use to document uh, the design of this in 2D so a machinist can take this um, and, uh, and model this up. So, you know, there's a couple ways to do it. You can either grab these dimensions if you so choose, um, or let me just go ahead and cancel out of that. We can go to the Annotate tab, and we can begin to uh, place other types of dimensions. So, you know, maybe I want the, uh, the outside radius of, uh, uh, of this right here, so let's grab that radius, and you can see it's... Uh, uh, and, and, and the dimensional standards are all based upon, you know, the template that you choose. They're all in your style library, so you'll go to the, the Manage tab, and determine style libraries. Those of you who went through the tutorials know about the style libraries. Uh, those of you that haven't, I definitely recommend going through the tutorial on style libraries. All right, so I'm going to grab a couple more dimensions here. You'll see that this, this time we grabbed a, uh, uh, a diameter. Last time it was a radius. It all depends on the geometry that you select. Um, or, you know, if you go in here and say, you know what, there's a radius there, um, but in fact I want it to be a diameter, you can just go to the dimension type by right-clicking your mouse and say, you know, I want that to be a diameter dimension, and there you go. Now, there's a couple really nice uh, tools for automatically uh, doing things like center lines. Center lines is, you know, pretty common. So I can right click and say automated center lines, go ahead and grab uh, uh, the holes and such that are on here, 
and there they are. Now that centerline pattern, maybe you, you, you want to get the, um, you know, something that, uh, that you can actually annotate and grab the, the outside or the, the diameter of that pattern. So let's just go ahead and undo that because there's a couple of different options here that I want to go ahead and point out. So what I'll do is I'm going to go through and grab the centered pattern. Now once you call up the center pattern command, if you take a look at the lower left hand corner, it says select the center of the circular pattern. Well the center of that's going to be right here in the middle. Next it's going to say go ahead and click a location. What I'll do is I'll just kind of click on through here and as you can see it's creating that centered pattern for me. So I'll go ahead and say create. If I want to connect those, done. I can just kind of drag that around and get it you know, about where I want it to be. Now that's, I, that's actually something I can dimension to. Again, so if I can say dimension type diameter, seems to make a little bit more sense there. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a whole note. Now the whole note um, is, uh, you know, it, it's rather than just grabbing a diameter and then manually typing in the whole information, what you can do is you can use the, the whole and thread notes to get the actual information from the hole itself inside of the part. So you can see that I've got 11 millimeter diameter uh, that's uh, 20 millimeters deep. Done. You can even edit these, go into edit the whole note, and say, you know what, go ahead and add the number of instances. So I'll add the number of instances to that whole note, and you can see that six holes, 11 millimeters by uh, 20 millimeters deep. All right, let's go ahead and change the scale of this view up here. I'm going to knock that down just a little bit, make room for some additional detail views and maybe a section view. So let's say that, you know, a section view is something that's appropriate here. So let's just go ahead and say section view. And I'll just draw my section line, right click and continue, and place the view over to the right like you see here. Move some views around to make sure it fits on the screen. And now I can go about dimensioning or placing the dimensions uh, on this section right here. So here I can say grab the radius like so. Maybe grab that dimension for some odd reason. You'll know, the, and, the, and the point that I'm making here is, um, you know, the ability to, to bounce back and forth between an angular dimension, a radial dimension, linear dimensions, um, but still using just one command. It's pretty handy so you don't have to bounce back and forth between all the different types of, uh, of commands.